As my second video on this channel, I decided that I will interview one of my best friends about quarantine, reading books, YA, all of the good stuff. Um, so this is my best friend. Introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Hannah. No H at the end. Just gonna make that <laughs> <laughs> Okay, fantastic. Um, so how long have you been reading? Um, well, I started reading back in, I would say, 6th, 7th grade, but I didn't really pick it back up again until sophomore year of high school. When did you get into reading without the presence of, like, parents or school or, like, some other kind of force drawing you to read? Um... Or has it always just been your desire to read? I'd say maybe a little bit of a mixture just due to the fact that I read before just, you know, because, like, people would always recommend books. They're just like, oh, my gosh, this is so good. Back in the Percy Jackson series was super big for the first time. Um, and so I kind of just started picking up books then. Um, but I think it was once I got to high school and, you know, you recommended <laughs> Court of Thorns and Roses, did I really get back into the scene and I wanted to read a lot more of the genre and stuff like that because I didn't really have a lot of what I really liked to read back then so when I got older I was able to read a lot more of like you know what I wanted to read and what I look for in books so. yeah well glad I could help that's <laughs> such a compliment that, that's um, how we got all this <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> or it's on the side it's on it's just this whole thing pretty much um yeah so has this quarantine helped your reading habits? Why or why not? Because we're all at home now. Okay, so I would have to say it has not helped my reading habits because, you know me, I'm a really, really fast reader, and so I get through things really fast, especially if they're really good. And if I like the author, cough, cough. Cough, cough. <laughs> oh, it's on um, my bed. <laughs> I have so much more time on my hands, you know, like, I feel like I can read so much more, is I don't want to read because it's something that I can do, and I have a lot more free time for it, and so I'm procrastinating on it, you know? Usually, by now, I have finished this wonderful book, but I'm still only after chapter three, so... <laughs> well, I'm catching up, I'm on chapter two. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, we should do a readathon and just read it, because... What other what what else is there to do except so much homework that I've been procrastinating on? I have two four things due to today. That's lovely. I have to rewrite a paper on German, so I feel that. <laughs> so where would you recommend people can get cheap books um, online? Because we can't really go out of our houses, and it's really in like you really don't want to spend a lot of money right now. Like you want to save as much money as you can for this, but yeah. like. Where would one go to expand their library? Okay, so you know me. I'm a huge fan of Amazon. <laughs> so I would say that. But there's a lot of other book um, stores online that you can buy from. I know Half Price Books does tend to have a lot of really good deals. And from time to time, they'll have, like, these cute little charms, like, for free. And you can just put that in with your purchase. Um... And also, um, I forget the name of this other one, but I was kind of looking at it, shoot, I really wish I would remember this title, um, but there's, like, a lot of, like, used book, like, websites that you can go on, and they'll have a really great selection of YA, historical fiction, fiction, nonfiction. And I get a lot of my books just from perusing, seeing what the best prices are. I wouldn't say buy the first thing that you see, like, oh, this is 20% off. I'm just going to get it because that's a great deal. I would say shop around first. I know me when I'm on Amazon, because I have um, an employee discount where I work, um, I know that I judge by that factor. If it's over that percentage, then I'll think about it, but I'll still kind of shop around to see if you can get the better deal. Because you don't know you're here one day and it's 20% off, but then if you go on another website, it'll be like 50% off. And then you just missed out on that great deal. Yeah. I know one place that I kind of browse and go to is um, Thrift Books, where like you can get books for like a dollar, $3. It's insane. Um, 
yeah, so definitely shouldn't go on those websites, but totally want to. Um, <laughs> so with that, with those great sites that people can go to, do you have any book recommendations that people should start getting into because of this? Everyone's at home. Like We just want to get away from the world right now. We just want to escape. Some people go to music or movies or TV shows. Others go to books. Do you have any book recommendations that can just really pull you away from the world? Okay, I'm going to have to kind of peruse my shelf really fast. <laughs> um, if, you're look- if people are looking for really good ones, I have two. One that's really popular, one that's not. It's so-so. Um, so I'd say my first recommendation, if you're looking for a really popular one, really fast paced, you know, you're not going to think about anything else for a really long time. You've read this one, Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo. It's so good. Uh, the character choices are amazing. The world that they built it around is really great. Exactly, exactly. Um, and you know, it's really awesome because it's super fast paced. And, you know, I'm, you know me, I'm usually not one to go for books that last, like, a day or two, and that's 300 pages worth of that. But the fact that Six of Crows, it takes place within, like, the span of a week, but it just goes so fast that it doesn't even bother me, you know? Like, it, it doesn't even matter, because it's written in a way that it, was, it needs to be in that time slot, and it needs to have this amount of detail in order for it to work, and I think Libra Dugo did a really, really great job of that. Agreed. Um, It is an amazing book with a lot of really interesting characters that anyone can relate to. Um, It does go pretty fast in terms of, like, events, but you get get to see, like, everything. You get to see all the little conflicts. You get to see the character growth that just has to be done so quickly. Um, And it's really exciting. And at the end, there is a bit of a cliffhanger, so I would also recommend the next book in the series, Crooked Kingdom. Uh, this is a duology, so it's just two books. That's the right term, right? Duology? Yeah. So it's just two books, um, but it's in the Grisha, the, the Grishaverse. Um, so you can just f- go full force into this series, into this world, by also reading, um, by also going into Shadow of Bone, um, Sage... Sage and Storm and Rain, Rain and Rising, Rain and Rising, um, and just totally go headfirst into this series. There is also another book that came out in the series, King of Scars, that you can also just go headfirst <laughs> into. This is a great series just to make you bring your mind off of everything, and have already. One, two, three, four, five, six books to just engulf yourself in. So, great recommendation. What was the other one? Um, just a quick advent on that, too. Um, I was looking a little bit more online, and you don't really need to read any specific book first in order to read the rest of them. Now, I originally thought that you would have to read, you know, the other series besides Six of Crows in order to read King of Scars, but you don't have to do that. You can just dive into it, and there's not going to be any spoils. You're just going to go for it, and it's going to be really great. Um, uh, second, uh, it's called Dance of Thieves by Mary E. P- Pars- Pearson. That. Um, it's really good. Um, so, I would have to say, hold on, let me think. Okay, so, this book, it honestly really surprised me. I kind of picked this up because I really, really liked the cover. You know, don't judge a book by its cover, but sometimes that helps. Um, it had a really neat, like, um, mafia feel to it, which I thought was really awesome, and that's kind of what pulled me into it. Um, now, it's not exactly super magical, but it's in the realm if you've read kind of, uh, if you've read anything with, like, um, kind of like Game of Thrones or or Priority of the Orange Tree. Magic doesn't play a super big part, and it's not a really huge part of the plot, but you do kind of see it working in the story a little bit. You know, like, there's hints to, like, oh, like, this is how it once was, but now it's kind of more, like, not so magical, but, you know, you still kind of get that magical feel. Now, like I said, the one big thing about this that I really liked was the mafia feel of it, 
it's, it was really awesome, and they did a really good job of having that in it. Now, I'll admit, the wording at the beginning is kind of difficult to get into, but once you get past, I think, the first few chapters, it really starts to flow in a way that is really nice, and they have these um, diary entries about, like, kind of, like, the start of, for lack of better terms, you know, their mafia group from the very first people who came and located in the city that they are in in the main plot. And I think it's a really cool tie-in, because then they also mention these characters throughout the story. And this does have a sequel to it. It's called Bow Thieves. Um, right here. I haven't read this one yet, but it's on my to-read list since we're in quarantine. Um, but basically the series fall follows a ex-thief who is now in the Queen's Guard, of um, another place, I think it's Venda, was the kingdom that she works in. And basically, uh, she has to go to this town because there's a lot of um, reports of people not collaborating. Um, so under the order of the queen, she goes there and stuff goes down. And it's really awesome. And it's a really great enemy to lovers romance type thing, um, if people are <laughs> into that. Um, but yeah, it's definitely a really good read, and I'd suggest reading it, but yeah. Well, awesome. I cannot wait to borrow that from you. (laughs) (laughs) Um, um, yeah, so thank you so much for talking to me. Do you have any other kind of bookish things that you want to talk about to all the great people watching this? Um, bookish things how? Just, like, habits or... Words of encouragement to get back into reading if we're in a slump or something. I don't know. Anything that comes to mind, I guess. Okay, yeah. Um, so then on that note, I'd say um, if you're looking to get into another kind of genre of book, now is, I would think, the perfect time to do it. Uh, just because, you know, you have so much more time, even if it, like me, it doesn't really seem like we have a lot more time. Um you have a lot more time to get into it. I would suggest if anyone's looking to get into another, like, genre or series, like, I know I wanted to really get into a historical fiction a while back, so I would say try and pick a book that kind of blends the two of what you read now and what you're trying to go into. So, for example, when I was trying to get into historical fiction, um, I read this amazing book, where are you? Okay, it's called A Secret History of Witches, where it really blended in the really, like, fantastical feel of the books I usually read, and, um, like, the historical fiction that I was looking forward to reading in the coming days. And then I started picking up a lot more historical fiction books, because it kind of, it was my gateway into, um, historical fiction a lot of people will say well you have that gateway book that gets you into reading i like to say you also have many gateway books that get you into different genres of series but yeah so definitely now would be the time to like kind of pick up explore your horizons yeah that is some great advice and if anyone who's also wants like a historical fiction recommendation do you have anything anything for them because i definitely do oh okay secret <laughs> history of witches okay fantastic i'm just gonna continue with this yeah or anything but anything by Daisy Goodwin, she's really good. If you like, if you're looking for more of like a Downton Abbey feel, definitely she's really, really good. Um, I read her one book called American Heiress. Um, basically, um, the main character she is the richest person in America, but her family wants her to have a title, so they go to London, take a ship to London, and they try and marry her off to um, these super rich people, so she gets a title. Um, yeah that's really cool and then she also has a historical fiction book on queen victoria um i haven't read this one yet but it looks really good a co-worker of mine read it i let her borrow this and she said it was phenomenal and is a very high recommendation for people who like historical fiction so you might want to check that one out too but yeah. anyone who, and then for me anyone who wants historical fiction with a bit of a darker tone but still ridiculously cute and romantic anyone who loves them like the intelligence of Sherlock Holmes. I so recommend Stalking Jack the Ripper. <laughs> it is one of my favorite books and that is very surprising because I this is like kind of historical fiction but very a a very Carrie I can't even pronounce her name. I'm sorry. 
Carrie Menesculico's like version of histor history and it's fantastic. It's fantastic. It's about a girl who lives in the um like 19th century yeah, 19th century and wants to be a Basically, it wants to be a coroner, so she wants to look at dead bodies and figure out why they died. Um, but she can't because it's the 19th century and she's in London and women didn't really go to classes or anything like that. But she has an epic adventure and she meets basically a very charming Sherlock Holmes and they go on crime adventure stories together and it is... Fantastic and very dark and twisted, but the love is so cute. <laughs> so highly re recommend, highly recommend if you want historical fiction with a darker twisted tone. <laughs> um, I think that's all I had to say, and I think this video turned out very well. Um, so still don't ha I don't have a sign off for videos but I'm hoping to make more of them so anyone who is watching thank you so much for watching and I will hopefully be able to make more videos now because of this quarantine and getting back into editing so it's really re very exciting so stay tuned to my blog a dyslexics blog and stay tuned to my YouTube channel a dyslexics um the dyslexic writer all very exciting stuff hopefully will be coming out soon depending if I find motivation to do anything at my house Maybe that'll be another video, finding motivation in your house, because that is so difficult just coming out of college. It's very strange. Anywho, any last words? No, I think you basically covered it. Thanks for having me. Oh, thank you for being my first guest. Well, kind of. My first video guest, but still. Okay. <laughs> and I do.